Just try not to sit in front of the camera here. Oh, you guys are going over there, all right.
set up, it looks like it should be pretty much, I got it online, all you just gotta do is just move it back and forth, that's it. Hey, Brian, can you check the video? Someone got a text that the video's not, the sound's not working, but that just might be because it's not ready to go yet. Let's just to make sure the video sounds all good. It might be because I had them turned down. That is plugged into Number three. Three should be. Let's see here, light. Let's see here, three. All right. Again, let's see if we can check the sound on the video. One, two, one, two. We got ten minutes. Ten minutes till tip off. Ten minutes till tip off. Ten minutes till tip off, Brian. These teams look the same in their uniforms. <laughs> you can't tell them apart. I could just look up the camera here. Check, 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 one, two, one, two. Check, 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 one, two. I don't want to be too loud. Check, 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 one, two, one, two. Check, 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 one, two. Let's see. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Eight minutes till start. Eight minutes till start. Check, 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 check.
Okay. Here we go, here we go. One minute, one minute. Good evening and welcome to tonight's contest in the State 4A playoffs. Tonight, the 
Brooke of this team, Steamboat Spring Sailors. And your Montrose High Indians. We're very happy that our teams can be here to play tonight. In order to keep it that way, we do ask you to follow a couple of different rules. Number one, if you are a fan, it is required that you do keep your mask on at all times, above your nose and below your chin, and be socially distanced from all other family groups. If you are a player, please do have your mask on at all times, social distance from other individuals. When you're on the bench, you must be sitting on one of the white squares. After the game, please meet your player in the parking lot. There is no loitering at the entrance to avoid the gym. Welcome, 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 everybody. Sorry, they're just doing an announcement here. I was trying to listen in. I apologize for the delay. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Montrose, Colorado. We're gonna do the national anthem here. And they're getting ready to take on the Montrose Indians, also with a 16-0 record. Real quick here, you are listening to Steamboat Radio and KTYV Sports on FM at 97.7 and 105.7 on your FM dial. You can also follow us at SteamboatRadio.com. Sports. I'm Drew McElhaney. I'll be taking you through this journey for the next couple of hours. In the next couple of hours, we will finally find out how the West was won. For these are the two last standing teams from the western slope of Colorado trying to make it to the final four down in Colorado Springs. The last time Montrose appeared this far into the state basketball playoffs was 1992 with a victory, but lost in the semifinals to Lamar. Steamboat Springs last time won this far into the state playoffs in 1986. They've been here seven times since, but have never walked away with a win. Can they change the tides tonight? We're getting ready for the tip-off. Eric Pollard wins the tip. Jeff Kreisick up top, being guarded by Luke Hutto. And now over to Kellen Adams. Kellen Adams now back to Jake Kreisick, trying to feed it to Pollard down low. They find him. Nice kiss off the glass by Eric Pollard. First possession of the game for the Sailors, and it's two points for the big man down low. All right, and now here they come. Here comes Montrose. I'll have to learn their names. That's Trey Reese. Now it's Luke Hutto. He seems to be their star player. And now it goes over to che Fletcher Cheesum. He's got a good shot from the outside. At the, he's their best three-point percentage shooter. And Luke Hutto drives the lane with a nice touch. I watched him in warm-ups. He's a very good basketball player. Steamboat will have their hands full trying to guard Luke Hutto. And that's number four, Eric Pollard, trying to handle the ball. Gets a traveling violation on the Sailors. And now Montrose will bring the ball up the court. No pressure by Steamboat. Steamboat, an extremely good defensive team. Doesn't need to full court press you because they will make your life miserable in the half court. Now they feed it in the Hutto. He goes in, tries, nice touch in. He's gonna be probably the best player that the Sailors have seen all season. Just seeing what I've seen so far. Kellen Adams now has the ball for Steamboat. He drives into the lane, looking to get to someone, a miscommunication, but the ball goes off the referee, back into Kay Gideon's hands, and now it's in Granger Rowan. Now Kellen Adams finds Jake Kreisick. Jake Kreisick now feeds it into a slashing Kate Gideon, who does a nice lay-in. 6.20 to go left in the first quarter. It's 4-4, Steamboat Montrose. Now here comes Cheesum with the ball, being guarded by Gideon. Now 
Oh, there's almost a steal by Kay Gideon. The ball's on the floor. Bodies go down. Kellen Adams, one of them. They drives in, and it's going to be a foul. Looks like a blocking foul. My guess it's going to be on Eric Pollard, and it is on Eric Pollard. That'll be his first foul. It's going to be number 23. Trey Reese going to be inbounding the ball on the baseline for Montrose. Eric Pollard's going to take a break. And Jackson Metzler is going to step in. The coach going with a little smaller lineup here. Jackson Metzler certainly outsized with the person he's defending. Hutto drives in, dishes it off, and then the shot is missed by Ashton Oberg. Ashton Oberg just missed his first attempt. Christ, it goes through the legs. Now to Gideon. Gideon up top. Gideon now finds Granger Rowan. Granger Rowan now out to Kate Gideon. Okay, Gideon has nothing, gives it to Rowan. Now to Jake Kreisick. Now over to Jackson Metzler. Jackson Metzler not taking a shot, and Kay Gideon's gonna set everything back up again. Get the offense going. Hutto goes for a steal, and Steamboat keeps him from getting the ball. It's gonna be out of bounds on Montrose. Steamboat ball. 525, let's go in the first quarter, 4-4. Now Kay Gideon has the ball up top for the Sailors. Looking to feed it down low. Now finds it at the Christ. It's still out high. Now he finds Kellen Adams. Kellen Adams, one dribble, picks up his drill, finds Jackson Messler, doesn't pull the trigger. Now he finds Rowan. No one taking the shot here. Maybe a few nerves going on. Nice pass to Kellen Adams, but it's shut down by good defense from Montrose. Now they find Kellen Adams again, but nothing going. He finds Jake Kreisick, nice feed, and Jake kisses it off the glass. Four two. 4.52 left to go in the first. Sailors have a lead, 6-4. to four. And now it's going to be Trey Reese with the ball up top. Makes a move. Now he kicks it over. Now it ends up in Luke Hutto's hands. Hutto now will find Trey Reese, who tries to feed it in to uh, Ashton Oberg. And the ball goes out of bounds on Montrose. Sailor ball. 4.35 left to go in the first quarter. 6-4. Sailors with the lead. Kate Gideon inbounds the ball to Jackson Metzler, then retrieves the ball back and brings it up to court. These two teams both undefeated and trying to keep their dream seasons alive. Jake Kreisick now with the ball up top, finds Jackson Metzler. Now to Granger Rowan, doesn't pull the trigger, thought about it. Now gives it up to Jake Kreisick, who's trying to figure out what he wants to do with it. Goes behind the back and gets shut down by good defense. Kay Gideon now has the ball for the Sailors. He'll try doing something, and he gives it up to Jackson Metzler. Metzler trying to get in. Nothing. Good defense by the Montrose Indians. Kay Gideon now has the ball up top, and they'll start the offense all over again, see if they can get something going. There's a screen. Nice feed to Gideon. He finds Jackson Metzler in the corner. He lets it fly. Oh, halfway down, comes back out. Here's a little break by Montrose. It's Hutto goes in on Kreisick. Called for the foul, it's gonna be an and one. That's a wise play by Luke Hutto of Montrose. Wait to get Jake Kreisick in the air and jump into him and draw the foul. 3.42 left to go in the first quarter, 6-6. Six, six. We've got a tie. Well, not only is the Sailors undefeated, but the other people that are undefeated are our sponsors. For they have not suffered a loss yet this year either. We'd like to thank Yampa Valley Bank, Yampa Valley's only locally owned bank, Alpine Lumber, Contractor's Choice and Homeowner's Friend, Mountain View Car Wash, home of the Unlimited Wash Club, Russell's Auto Salon, your premier auto body service center, Steamboat Ace Hardware, the helpful place and great place for knowledgeable advice and helpful service, the all new Steamboat Motors, and the Paoli Group at Colorado Group Realty. We thank all our sponsors for bringing you these games. Luke Hutto shooting the and one now, and it's too hard. Oh, and he gets the members bounce. That's why you pay your members dues, so you can get the members bounce. Now Kay Gideon brings the ball up for Steamboat. Moves it across midcourt, now finds Jackson Metzler. Now over to Carter Eastead, who's now in the game. He's the best six man I've seen all season. I like to call him the spark plug. Can't find something, he has his pick, pockets picked. By number 34 of Montrose. That's uh, Cody Proctor, first time into the game, picked 
picked Carter Reestead's hands and uh, also drew a foul on the play on Carter Reestead. 325 left to go in the first quarter. Seven points Indians, six points Sailors. Now Ty Reese brings the ball up and he's going to find Cheesum. Who's going to find Hutto? Hutto makes a nice turnaround hook shot. That kid's got a skillful game of basketball. He knows how to play this game. There's no doubt. Kate Gideon now with the ball for the Sailors. Picks up his dribble out top. Now he finds Jackson Messler. Now over to Carter Reestead. Carter Reestead now will find Gideon who will slash to the rack. Tries to do a bounce test to Pollard. It's intercepted. They got numbers going the other way. Tyrese with a lay in for Montrose. Says Montrose had numbers on the Sailors. 2.42 left to go in the first. 11 points, Indians. Six points for your Sailors. Cade Gideon now with the ball. He finds Jackson Metzler. Back to Gideon. He'll pop up a three, and he nails it. That's a great sign for the Sailors. Cade Gideon getting hot. Will be good for the Sailors. 2.26 left to go now in the first quarter. 11 points, Indians. Nine points, Sailors. Tyrese with the ball for Montrose, and he gives it up to Hawks. Hawks now has the ball. Jacob Hawks has the ball for Montrose. Now he gives it up to Luke Hutto, being guarded by Gideon. Gideon shuts him down. He gives it up to Hawks. Now back to Hutto, goes baseline, makes a great move, misses it. Sailors fail away from the rebound, letting Hutto just get it all alone and put it right back in. 13-9, Indians lead the Sailors. 151 left to go in the first quarter. Gideon now with the ball. And there's gonna be a reach-in foul on Mr. Hawks, Mr. Jacob Hawks with his first foul of the game. And there's gonna be some substitutions here. Reestead out, Pollard out, and Gideon out. Kellen Adams in, Parker Lindquist is in, Jake Kreisick in, Jackson Metzler's in, and Granger Rowan is in. Kellen Adams now with the ball for Steamboat, moves the ball up, finds Granger Rowan looking to shoot. And he does, he shoots a long outside three, misses, almost gets the bounce. Rebounded by Oberg of Montrose. And then he makes a move, drives into the paint, puts it up too hard. And that should have been a foul, not called. Kreisick goes to the ground. And Hawks will take a three, and he will hit it. So the Montrose Indians get away with a foul on the rebound and turn it into three points. 16-9 now, the Indians lead the Sailors. 1-11 left to go in the first quarter. Kellen Adams now with the ball. He finds Parker Lindquist in the corner. Parker now waits for somebody. Oh, I'm sorry, there's Parker Lindquist. And he takes a three, just misses. Comes in for the rebound and creates a foul. Well, Parker Lindquist is a great three-point shooter. Just missed that one. Looked good on the way. Just didn't find the cylinder. 58 points, 58 seconds left to go in the first quarter. 16-9, Indians lead the Sailors. 16-0 Sailors and the 16-0 Montrose Indians battling for the title, the bragging rights of the Western Slope. Both teams, unfamiliar territory with being this far into the playoffs. Both teams won it bad, and one team will be sad at the end of this day. Montrose now is Hawks. Hawks will find Oberg. Oberg into Hutto. Hutto has got a nice touch from the inside, but missed that one. Rebound comes down to Kellen Adams. Kellen Adams goes between the legs, being guarded way out top by Oberg, and now goes to Gideon. Feisty defense, definitely the best defense the Sailors have seen all season. There's no doubt about it. Having a hard time getting the ball inside the three-point perimeter. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Gideon getting nothing, looking for a three. Jay Kreisen makes a nice move, gets an open shot, but comes up short. And that's going to end the first quarter. So at the end of the first quarter, 16 points for the Indians, nine points for the Sailors. Well, again, we'd like to thank uh, the Paoli Group with Colorado Group Realty. Let Chris Paoli and his team help you with all your real estate needs, whether buying or selling. The Paoli Group has you covered. The Steamboat Motors also, Ford Dodge, Jeep, Ram trucks with store-to-door -door service. Shop them online at SteamboatMotors.com. Well, it was an interesting drive, four-hour drive down here to Montrose with an interesting detour on I-70 that added 
probably an extra 30 minutes, I would say, to the drive time. Putting the Steamboat basketball team a little bit behind on their uh, arrival. And that never helps a team that's rolling into town to battle to have to not get as much time to, you know, get yourself settled before the game. Both teams are the same colors. Montrose is red and white and black, and Steamboat is red, white, and black. Montrose in the whites with red numbers, and Sailors looking tough in the all blacks with red numbers and red lettering. And a nice shot there put up by Oberg for the Indians. And they've doubled up now the Sailors at 18-9. And a little mistake there by the Sailors, turning the ball over now. To the Indians, it's gonna be Luke Hutto inbounding the ball to Trey Reese. Trey Reese will bring the ball across midcourt. Now he gives it up to Hutto, now over to uh, Proctor, Kobe Proctor. Now back over to Trey Reese. And it's Hutto again, he's gonna go baseline. And he finds the trees, has to kick it back out. He kicks it out to Ashton Oberg, who makes a nice shot from about eight feet out. So the Montrose Indians are rolling right now. 7-11 left to go in the first half. 20 points Indians, nine points Sailors. Kate Gideon now drives in, kicks it out to Kellen Adams. For three, and he misses everything. Nothing on that one. Sailors probably feeling a little pressure right now, being down and being on the road. And too many steps there for Mr. Cody Proctor as he travels for Montrose. Sailor ball. It's going to be Kellen Adams now inbounding the ball to Cade Gideon. A couple substitutions on the Indian side of the court. And Gideon now has the ball. 6.56 left to go in the first half. Cade Gideon now makes a move up top, drives in, takes, the, kisses it off the glass, and gets an and one. That's a great shot by Cade Gideon. That's excellent leadership by the sophomore, but also the starting quarterback of the Sailor football team. A natural born leader, Cade Gideon. 20 points for the Indians, 11 points for the Sailors. And he too hard on the free throw and rebounded by Montrose. It's gonna be Trey Reese bringing it up. He's going to find Hutto. Hutto's going to drive in, challenge Kreisik. Kreisik makes the miss, but he gets his rebound. They got to stop Luke Hutto from getting his second opportunities. He's getting it too easy. So now it's 22 11. Kate Gideon drives, and he's going to get a charge. Yep, I was, the ref had to think about it for a second, and uh, it's pretty obvious it was a charge by Mr. Gideon. He didn't go up with the shot. He dished it off, but couldn't control his forward momentum and crashed in to the Indian. It's going to be now Carter Reestead coming into the game. Coach feeling like we need a, the spark plug, a little energy to go get the Sailor team moving. And now it's going to be Trey Reese. Yep, I'm getting that right. Trey Reese. Now it's. Uh, And it's going to be Trey Reese. Something was wrong with the Montrose offense. And the coach calls a timeout on the floor. 6 of 8 left to go in the first half. 22 points Indians, 11 points Sailors. I'd like to thank all the people that are tuning in all around the country. We have people tuning in from the state of Washington, the state of Idaho. We have people from two places in Texas, Houston, Texas. We have people from Lubbock, Texas. People listening from Oregon and South Carolina. There's also people listening in Kansas City, Kansas. And we've gone international, Steamboat, for I know for a fact there's somebody listening in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Trey Reese now has the ball. Now they try to get the ball to Luke Hutto. The pass is interrupted by Cade Gideon. The ball goes out of bounds on the Sailor Indian ball. 6.03 left to go in the first half. 22-11 Indians. Now they'll inbound the ball and they'll find... Oh, and there's Luke Hutto again, but he can't get that one to fall. But we don't get the offensive, another defensive rebound. Another offensive rebound. 
is killing the Sailors. The Sailors would be a lot closer in this game if it weren't for the offensive rebounds. 24-11, Indians. Jake Kreisick up top with the ball. Pump fakes, gets Hutto in the air, but can't do anything with it. Now he finds Gideon. Gideon now finds Jackson Metzler, who hasn't pulled the trigger yet. Gideon from the corner fires away, and he hits. Gideon feeling it, feeling it today, and we need it right now. For some of the main shooters have not really produced yet for the Sailors. When one is down, the other needs to step up, and that's what they're doing. Great basketball by Kay Gideon. And there is... That's uh, Oberg with a really nice shot from behind the basket to just kind of reach out, kiss it off the glass. Five minutes left to go, 26-14, it ends. Granger Rowan now fakes, drives in, goes up, puts it up, nice shot. Maybe should have even gotten an and one, but didn't get the whistle. 4.54, 26-16, still a 10-point lead for Montrose. Trey Reese with the ball now, Granger Rowan on him. Now he gives it up to Hutto, fakes it, gets Gideon in the air, goes in, but Granger Rowan does a great job of taking over, switched off and stopped Hutto's progress, and now it's Jake Kreisick with the ball. Tries to go coast to coast, picks up his dribble. He's got a little bit of trouble here, and he's going to find Granger Rowan at top. Granger's going to go in again. This time he's going to stop, but he feeds Carter Reset. He gets blocked, and then Carter Reset gets blocked again, but that time they say, that's a foul, Mr. Oberg. That's a foul. Two free throws for Carter Reestead for Steamboat. 423 left to go in the first half. 26 points for the Indians. 16 Sailors. Carter Reestead shooting the first one of two. Little hard. Doesn't fall. I think there's a little nerves going on right now for the Sailors. And the Sailors have played a lot of home games recently. A little different being on the road this far in the state playoffs. You know it's in the back of their minds. And he shoots that one again a little too hard, but that's Jake Kreisick with a good rebound for the Sailors. He steps out, looks for a three, doesn't take it. Gideon now has it, gives it back to Kreisick. Kreisick looking to go in, tries to go behind the back. Pollard's there to clean up the ball, though, as, it, as Kreisick lost control of it. Now it's Carter Reestead. He's going to drive back in, and that ball is just a little bit errant. Maybe could have been a foul called, but there wasn't. And now it's Oberg slashing to the rack, and he puts it in. So this Montrose team has uh, got really nice touch when they're in close. They really don't. They really have a nice soft touch when they put it off the glass. Now it's Kreisick for Steamboat. He finds Gideon. That's great defense. Now Jackson Metzler's open, but he's off the mark. That was his first attempt of the game. And sometimes when you wait that long to take your first shot, you're still a little cold. And he didn't find the target. 328 left to go in the first half. 28-16, Montrose. And there is um, 21, I apologize. That was Cheesum with that shot and miss. Now it's Carter Easted with Steamboat. And now he finds Kay Gideon. Now they find Eric Pollard, but not down low. Pollard out high. Now he does one bounce, tries to go in. Too hard off the glass. And now here comes Montrose. And that's Cheesum went coast to coast. Missed, but a follow-up by Mr. Proctor. Nope, I'm sorry. That was Trey Reese with the follow-up. And Montrose really sticking it to Steamboat right now. 30 points for the Montrose Indians. 16 points. For the Sailors, 2.53 left to go in the first half. We haven't had any big collisions yet, but if you find yourself with a big collision, find yourself at Ross Russell's Auto Salon, your premier full-service auto body shop, where you always meet by accident. They've gone green, everybody, with environmentally safe paint. And we got uh, Coach Van Dahl on the sideline trying to calm his troops down, get them, get them organized. And let them know this is only the first half of a very long basketball game. Plenty of time left to go. And now the Sailors take the court. Trailing now by 14 points with 2.53 left to go in the first half. It's going to be Kellen Adams. 
And starts the offense, and now goes to Granger Rowan. Now he's up top. He finds Kreisick. He's going to take his first three, just misses. Pollard with a strong rebound and puts it in and gets the end one. The giant Sequoia, Eric Pollard, standing at 6'8". He's a tough person to match up against in this league. By far, probably the tallest person in the gym. Eric Pollard now will be taking his free throw to finish off the end one. A fairly decent free throw shooter, but he misses that one. But Kreisick almost comes down with the rebound. Oh, and he does a steal. Jake Kreisick steals the ball, finds Granger Rowan. He puts up a three, hit it, Granger. No, he misses. That would have been huge for the Sailors. As Trey Reese now has the ball for the Sailors. Or for the Indians, I apologize. And here we go, Trey Reese. He's got it to Proctor, now over to Oberg. Now he gives it to uh, Trey Reese. Reese now back to Proctor. As the defense, the chant comes from the Steamboat fans. And now it's Hutton. Hutton goes in, finds Mr. Pollard. He has to pull it up. He finds Proctor. Now, I mean, Proctor, now it's Trey Reese. I apologize, getting him mixed up a little bit here. Now it's back to Proctor. Proctor has the ball out top. Now they can't seem to get it inside. Trey Reese gets all fancy, but gets shut down. Now Proctor goes inside, and eventually it's stolen away by the Sailors with Granger Rowan coming up with the ball. Rowan now feeds it into Pollard, gets his man in the air, puts it off it's too hard, but gets the follow-up, but too hard. Oh, those were two easy ones. That's okay, Mr. Pollard. Get him next time. Now here comes Proctor down the middle. No, try Reese. And they're going to call a blocking foul on Eric Pollard. That's going to be a second foul of the game. With 122 left to go in the first half. 30 points for the Indians, 18 for the Sailors. Trey Reese shooting two for the Indians. And the first one rattles in and out. Gideon's going to come in. We're going to put Pollard on the bench with two fouls. Smart move by Coach Van Dahl. No reason to get the big guy in foul trouble with only a minute 22 left to go in the first half. Now Trey Reese for Montrose attempting his second free throw. Too hard. Oh, man, I can't believe that went in. That's the flattest, flattest free throw shot I've ever seen, but it, it worked. One of two for Mr. Reese. One seventeen left to go. Sailors trailing 31-18. Kate Gideon fires one, and he hits. Kate Gideon is on fire today. 108 left to go. 31-21. Sailors have brought it back down to a 10-point lead just before half here. And Oberg, Oberg tries to receive the ball from Proctor. Misses it. Now it's Kreisick bringing the ball up. He's just going to go. No, I thought he was going to go coast to coast. Pulls it up. Now he finds Gideon. Gideon with the hot hand. Get 47 seconds left to go. Gideon dribbling out front, trying to find something. Finds Kellen Adams. Kellen looks to drive in, but nothing. Now he finds Granger Rowan. Still nothing. 36 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Now it's back to Gideon. Gideon now makes, looks to make a move. Falls, but he gets the ball to Kreisick before it can be stolen away. Kreisick now to Rowan. 26 seconds left to go. As the Sailors are just moving the ball around out top and not really making any attempt to score here. 18 seconds. Now to go, Jackson Messler. Now back to Gideon. Gideon dribbling up top. Now we're down to 10 seconds. And they're going to find Kellen Adams. Now back out to Gideon, who I don't know if they know how much time's left. He's just going to go in. Oh, it looked like he had a nice layup attempt. And Mr. Luke Hutton says, no thank you, and just gets enough hands on the ball to make it miss. And there's a discussion on the court at the end of the half for it looked like the ball hit the roof, the, the uh, netting that hangs down from the roof. As one of the Montrose players tried to take a full length shot, he hit the netting hanging down. And the Sailors say there was time left on the clock when that hit, and that would have been out of bounds. Sailor ball, so there's discussion right now. We're going to see eight seconds back on the court, on the clock for the Sailors. So that's great awareness by the Sailor bench to realize that there was eight seconds still left on the clock when that ball hit the netting up by the roof, the ceiling, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's not what you're calling it. It's what I'm calling it. So eight seconds here. Sailors get one chance to get a shot off here. They're going to go baseball down to Pollard. It's going to be out of bounds again. 
That went, that eight seconds went by pretty fast considering Eric Pollard only had a chance to barely touch, or the other team barely touched the ball. I don't know, eight seconds ran off that quick. And they tried to feed it into Kreisick, and it doesn't go. So at halftime, it's 31 points for the hometown Indians, 21 points for your Sailors. And I'd have to say, after going uh, kind of cold there and getting kind of stunned by how good this Montrose team is, just to be down by 10 points at halftime is pretty good. I think the Sailors are finding themselves in a good situation. I looked at the last box score of Montrose at half to, uh, against Green Mountain, and uh, they did pretty good in the third quarter. That seems to be Steamboat's quarter as well. So it should be interesting to see which team comes out in the third quarter and made the right adjustments. This is Drew McElhaney with KTYV Sports on FM at 97.7 and 105.7. You can follow us online at SteamboatRadio.com. We are Fox Sports. We'll see you guys back here in about 10 minutes for the second half.
chesty. Okay. I think right about there. Welcome back to Montrose, Colorado, here in the shadows of the San Juan Mountains. We are KTYV Sports on FM at 105.7 and 97.7 on your FM dial. And you can follow us at SteamboatRadio.com. We are Fox Sports. Well, that was an interesting first half. I think the Sailors have seen their best team that they've seen all season by far. Luke Hutto is no joke. And he's got a good cast around him. I am Drew McElhaney with Steamboat Radio. And proud to bring you the second half of the quarterfinals of the Class 4A Colorado High School Basketball Playoffs. And it's going to be Steamboat Ball to start out the second half here. It's going to be, I believe, Cade Gideon. No, it's going to be Jake Kreisick inbounding the ball to Cade Gideon. With eight minutes on the clock. I think it's supposed to be eight minutes on the clock. There it is. Eight minutes on the clock. 31, 21. Let's get ready to rumble. Cade Gideon now has the ball for Steamboat. And he finds Jake Kreisick up top. Jake Kreisick looking to do something. Finds Kellen Adams. He drives into the paint. Kicks it back out to Rowan. Rowan, oh, halfway down. Comes back out. Ball's on the floor. Gideon leaving some skin on that floor, but can't come up with the ball. Indians now push it up the court. Trey Reese drives into the paint. Too hard. Ball, all sorts of hands go up for it. They say it's out of bounds on Mr. Oberg. Steamboat ball. Jake Kreisick now inbounds the ball to Kay Gideon, and Gideon will bring it up. Steamboat wearing the all blacks. And Montrose in the home whites. Both teams are red and, red and white teams. So they kind of look a lot alike in warm-ups because their warm-up uniforms are really, really similar. Similar. And Trey Reese now will have the ball. He'll give it up now to Cheesum, who now finds Hutto. Hutto makes a spin move, but there's... Mr. Pollard, and he's able to get it around Eric Pollard and get two points. So they're the first ones to strike in the second half is the Indians. And, the, and let's see if the Sailors can do what they normally do. Hopefully Coach Van Dahl remembered his Ouija board, his voodoo dolls, or whatever he uses at halftime all season to get these Sailors to come out and play strong in the third quarter. Unfortunately, there was a turnover there. They've come up empty on their first two attempts of the second half. Now it's Hawks with the ball, and he's going to find Oberg. Now out to Reese. No, nope, that's Cheesum. Sorry, Cheesum now being guarded. There gets swapped out. Almost a steal by Jake Kreisick. And the ball goes back to the Indians, and then Jake Kreisick picks up a foul. I believe that's his second one. It is his second foul of the game. No problem there. 33-21, Indians, 622 left to go in the third quarter. It's going to be Trey Reese inbounding the ball. He finds Hutto, now back to Reese. Then they do an alley-oop, but the feed is no good. And the ball goes sailing out of bounds. Sailor ball. 
right. Now here comes Kay Gideon up the court. Kay Gideon now will bring it across midcourt. Goes around the back. Oh, looked for a give, looked to find Eric Pollard, but he wasn't available. Now it goes out to Kellen Adams. Now Granger Rowan. They're all trying to get it to Pollard. There's Pollard and a nice easy two. That's what they need to do. Let the big dog eat. Let the big dog eat. Give it to Eric Pollard. That's how you're going to win this game. Now it's Reese for the Indians. Over to Hawks. Now to Hutto. Being guarded by Gideon. They feed it down low. He splits the D and gets a foul call. And that one might be against Kreisik. That could hurt the Sailors. As Kreisik is certainly not somebody they want sitting on the bench. And it is on Jay Kreisik. That's his third foul. Two quick ones here in the third quarter. 540 left to go in the third quarter. 33-23 Indians. Oberg shooting two. And he makes the first one. Oberg. Kreisik's going to go to the bench, and Jackson Metzler's going to come in. So you get a really good three-point shooter coming in, but you definitely lose height advantage when Kreisik goes. The 6'5", Kreisik goes to the bench, and he makes his second free throw. So he makes both of them. 35-23, Indians over the Sailors. Cade Gideon now finds Rowan, tries to find Pollard, and that's not a very good in. in pass inside and it's tipped away by the Indians. Now Luke Hutto has the ball for the Indians. He's looking to make moves and he just feeds it out. Now it's back into Reese's hand. It goes cross court over to Proctor. Proctor being guarded by Granger Rowan. 5-13 left to go in the third quarter. Now it's Hawks. Now he gives it back to Cheesem. Cheesem fires a three. It's too hard. But another offensive rebound there by Oberg and he's actually makes a nice shot and gets that one to fall. Well disciplined team is this India team and they're really good on the offensive boards. The Sailors not doing a very good job of blocking them out, but they feed the big boy down low and he gets an easy two for Eric Pollard. 447 left to go in the third quarter. 37-25 Indians. Here's now Proctor with the ball. I'm sorry, yep, that's Proctor, right? I can make sure I got my right numbers. Now he feeds it into Oberg. Turn around, kiss off the glass. And the defense is really going to have to get tight for Steamboat. They're just letting them get too easy of shots down low, just kissing it off the glass. Oh, and Rowan tries to feed it into a well-guarded Pollard. Probably should have maybe moved the ball around a little bit more before trying to force that ball down low like that. And the ball was easily deflected away. Now it's the Montrose ball. And that's, yep, Trey Reese. Trey Reese now to Cheesem. They find Oberg. Now back to Cheesem. Cheesem goes in. And he gets bailed out by the referee on that one. And that one's going to go against Eric Pollard. So that's going to be three on Eric Pollard. Steamboat starting to now feel a little bit of pressure with 3.55 left to go in the third quarter. Finding themselves down 14 points. The Indians shooting two. And both Pollard and Kreisik in a little bit of foul trouble here. Mr. Cheesem makes his first one of two. And some substitutes come in for the Sailors. And there's a timeout on the floor. And right now the Sailors are going to go over to the bench and try to get some uh, knowledgeable advice and some helpful service from Coach Van Dahl. If you're looking for knowledgeable um, advice and helpful service, you should visit Steamboat Ace Hardware, west of Steamboat and the Curve Plaza. My car is a mess, holy cow. It was like a uh, complete winter in Steamboat. It's a little slushy, it got down here, my car is just covered in muck. When I get back to Steamboat, I'm certainly going to Mountain View Car Wash because they're always helping the sailors clean up the competition and they can help clean up my truck. And it's also home of the Unlimited Wash Club. Go see Travis and the gang. 3.55 left to go in the third quarter. 40 points. Indians, 25 sailors. Sailors really need to get going. And there's another one. Sailors find themselves getting into a hole here. They're really going to have to show us something special here in the remaining time of this game to get themselves back in this match. Kreisik now to Gideon. I, I've certainly, they have not seen a defense this tough 
There's no doubt about that, but I think there's also maybe some nerves there. And they call a double dribble on Carter East. Said, see, these are mistakes we just didn't see all season. You didn't see double dribble mistakes. That 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 was called by the coach of Montrose. The, the ref actually didn't even see it. He called it when the coach of Montrose yelled it out. And they drive in. Great defense by Carter Reestead. So it's missed by Montros. Here's an opportunity for Steamboat. Gideon trying to feed it. Look for something down low. He drives the paint. Now finds Parker Lindquist for three, and he hits it. That's what we need. We need some guys to step up that haven't necessarily stepped up in other games. And Parker hits one. 41-28. Three minutes left to go in the third quarter. Oh, and there's almost a steal by Cade Gideon, but it goes off his hands and out of bounds. It'll be Ty Reese. Trey Reese, I apologize, inbounding the ball on the baseline for Montrose. They're looking to get something easy. They don't. They have to kick it way out top. Cheesem now gets the ball stolen by Carter Reestead. He's going to go coast to coast. Oh, enough. there's a total push. Oh, and a late, late, late whistle. <laughs> that, that penalty was called by the Steamboat fans. <laughs> it was an obvious foul, but the whistle came late. Maybe the, you know, with the mask on, maybe the referee had to find his whistle. 2.51 left to go in the third. 41, 28. Sailors trying to cut down on the lead here. Carter Reestead, not the best free throw shooter, but he makes that one. You don't have to be the best, you just got to be good. Carter Reestead now. We'll get the ball from the referee for his second attempt. And that one's much nicer too. So 41, 30, 11 point lead for the Indians with 240 left to go in the third quarter. Trey Reese with the ball. Now he finds Cheesum with Montrose. Now it's over, back to Trey Reese. Trey Reese being guarded by Gideon, makes the move, goes to the paint. And they're gonna call. So the, the Indians have found a, a little formula, and that's just driving in and hoping that the refs will call the foul on Steamboat. And he calls that one on Parker Lindquist. That's his second. 2.33 left to go in the third. And Mr. Reese misses his first attempt. Missed his first attempt there at the free throw. And he'll now attempt a second one. And he misses that one. And Steamboat slow to the ball. And it's Montrose ball, I guess. Uh, my view was blocked by the student section. This first student section I've seen all season. And they're standing where the ball went out of bounds. And my view is obstructed. I cannot see down there. But it is Montrose ball. Steamboat being slow to the rebound. Unlike Steamboat, not showing hustle. Usually they're the team that out hustles the other team. Now Luke Hutto tries to drive, but has nothing. Kicks it out to Hawks. Now Hawks will have to find Luke Hutto again. Now they feed it in to Oberg. Does a spin hook. Can't get it to fall. Okay, Gideon with the rebound. Just over two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Gideon goes through the leg, drives the paint, and no foul. Oh, and then another super late whistle. But it's the right call. It's the right call. Gideon was clearly fouled. Just took the ref a second to get the whistle to blow. Maybe he had to catch his breath. Who are we to criticize? Ah, it's Kay Gideon with the first of two. And that one rattles around and doesn't fall. Sailors just can't find a break in this game. Kay Gideon is stepping up offensively in this game. Usually a really good facilitator of the ball and a leader of this team and a hustler and not necessarily known for his scoring, but he has definitely kept the Sailors in this game. And now it's Montrose ball. Trey Reese finds Cheesum now into Luke Hutto. Luke tries to make a move on Carter Reestead. He says, nah, -uh. and Reestead with great defense goes out of bounds on Montrose. Nice turnover by the Sailors, and Gideon will now bring the ball up with just under two minutes left to go in the third. Trailing by 10 are your Sailors. Gideon now goes between the legs. Oh, he, th he thought he saw something. But quick hands 
quick hands by the Montrose Indians. And now the Montrose Indians finally contain, uh, get control of the ball and start it over. So here's Trey Reese at the top. He finds Cheesum. Cheesum now looking, give and go to Hutto. Hutto goes up tall and he just drops it in. Now Luke Hutto can sky people. I watched him do a 360 dunk and warm up and that one he went way up above the rim but just dropped it in. Parker Lindquist with a nice move. Can't get it to fall. Carter Reese dead with the muscle. Gets the rebound but doesn't get it to fall. He made his last two free throws. Let's hope he can make these two. For the Sailors need everything to fall at this point. And he'll be Carter Reestead shooting two with 108 left to go in the third. 43-31 Indians. And that one just a little too hard. Hits back iron, comes off. And Granger Rowan's going to come in and give Mr. Cade Gideon a breather. A little water. And Carter Reestead now retrieves the ball for his second attempt here. That one is good. So he makes one of two. 43, 32, 108, left to go in the third. It's now a Montrose ball. And here comes, it's a Hawks. Now over to Proctor, now to Cheesem. He shoots a three. And there's a, fall, a foul called away from the ball. And that's gonna be Parker Lindquist. That's gonna be his third. So Jake Kreisick with three, Eric Pollard with three, and now Parker Lindquist with three. Sailors find themselves in a little bit of foul trouble, which they haven't really been in all year, but they also haven't played a team this good. Now, Cheesen with the ball, almost has it picked by Carter Reestead and Granger Rowan. These two guys will drive you nuts. They're good defenders. And now it's Luke Hutto, now over to Cheesem. Nope, I'm sorry, that's uh, Reese. Reese drives in, finds Cheesem, he fakes it. Now Reese has it at the top. Now he hits it to Hawk. Hawks takes the three, in and out. Rebounded, Granger Rowan for the Sailors. And Granger will bring it up. Now he pushes it up to Carter Reestead. And Carter Reestead will get it out to Parker Lindquist and they'll start everything over and get it back to Kellen Adams, the point guard on the floor at the time. 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Sailors with the ball, trying to get one more attempt off before the buzzer, five seconds. Nothing open and he just traveled. Got a little, got a little happy feet right there. Did a little stutter step with 3.5 seconds left and hands it back over to Montrose. 43-32, Sailor is still trying to get back in this game. Montrose has been keeping him out on arm's length the whole way. Sailors just can't get it under 10 as the third quarter comes to an end and they're trailing by 11. As we head into the final quarter here. And we just wanna say, uh, Thank you to the Amp Valley Bank, the Amp Valley's only locally owned bank with locations in Steamboat and in Craig. Alpine Lumber, the contractor's choice and the homeowner's friend. Go see Skip and the gang at Alpine Lumber for all your building needs. They're located across the tracks just past Walgreens. Coach Van Dahl's got the whiteboard out and he's gonna give these guys some advice. He's gonna, he's gonna tell them, this is it sons, this is it. This is either buckle up, get going or find yourself going home. This is a tough one for either team, both 16 and 0. Neither team has lost all season. So either way, one team's going to be heartbroken at the end of this game. Let's hope it's the Indians. The Indians, I expect to, to see them here again next year for their uh, only have two seniors on their entire team and none of them being the main players, the main scorers, whereas Steamboat's the complete opposite. They've got all seniors, but like three underclassmen. If this is the Sailors year. If they're gonna do it, this is the year to do it. Kellen Adams now out guarding, now Rowan's out guarding, now Gideon's guarding, now Chrysler's guarding on Hawks. And Hawks brings it out to the top. Hawks now brings it back and gives it up. To Cheesem, now who finds Reese. Reese makes a move, nothing there. Dishes to the Hawk. Now Hutto down low, and the ball is knocked away by Cade Gideon. Sails out of bounds. Indian ball. 7.33 left to go in the game. 43-32 Indians. 
It's going to be Luke Hutto inbounding the ball for the Indians on the baseline near the corner. And he gives it up now to Reese. Now it goes into Hutto. Nice touch. Man, you get Hutto that close to the rim. He's pretty much guaranteed at least two points. He doesn't miss often. And now they're going to get a foul away from the ball. It looks like it must be an illegal screen. And we'll see who they put that up on the board. Third foul on the Hawks. I believe I've got the right name there. Nope, I'm sorry, that's Jordan Jennings. Parker Lindquist for three, and he hits it for the Sailors. They needed that one. That's Parker's second one. 7-12, left to go in the game. 45-35, Sailors finally get it back down to 10. We'd really like to see him get it farther down, like tie it up. They're going to have to get going, and it's going to be hard to do against this Indian team because we've seen already that they're a good team. And oh, and uh, almost Kay Kitty with a steal, almost stole it away from Cheesum. Now it's back, it went around the horn, back to Cheesum. Now it's back to Reese. Reese is at the top of, at the top, starting the offense over again. Now it's over to Cheesum. He tries to go in on Gideon. Gideon stops that progress. He goes back around, finds the trees, and he's swatted by Jake Kreisick, who then comes down with the, re the, the swat. So he blocked it and got the ball. Now they find Parker Lindquist. Now he gives it up to Cade Gideon. Gideon now looking to do something with it. Dribbles around, makes a spin, goes up, throws it kind of wildly out of, almost out of bounds. Saved by Adams, but then he gets it to Montrose who goes the court. Luke Hutto finishes it off. 6'10", left to go, 47-35. Cade Gideon just getting a little out of control on that last play. Made it kind of a pass. It was too hard for Adams to control. Now it goes to Rowan. He feeds it into Gideon. Great pass there, but Gideon can't finish it with the reverse layup. That's a great vision right there by Granger Rowan. That was a fantastic pass. Unfortunately, the Sailors don't get it to go down for anything. Gideon tries to pick the pocket of Reese, and now Reese will give it up to Cheesum. Now the Hawks. I mean, that's Jennings. I keep saying Hawks. That's Jennings. Now stolen by Kreisig. Kreisig now starting to come alive. Hasn't scored much. He goes coast to coast, and he misses the layup, but he gets a blocking foul on Jennings. That's going to be his fourth. Jordan Jennings has four fouls now for the Indians. He has a couple threes for them, so him going to the bench will be good for the Sailors. And there's a timeout on the floor, 531 left to go in the game. 47 for the Indians, 35 for the Sailors. Oh, man. Well, it's good to be back down here in the southern part of Colorado. It's always wonderful to visit different parts of Colorado. If you're wondering what the weather's like over here in Montrose, Colorado, well, think of the front range right now and think completely opposite. It's blue sky and no snow anywhere to be seen. It's beautiful. Well, seven seconds left to go here in the timeout. The Sailors now will come back onto the floor. We just really need to get going. We have, uh, we've had some people step up today that we needed to step up, but Kreisig really needs to get going. He's been the one that's been hot in the last two playoff games. And when you're one of our best weapons, we certainly need you. And that one's a little bit short on the first free throw. Just needs to bend his legs a little bit more. And you're shooting your free throws. It's all in bending your knees. And there you go. He bends his knees the second time, and he hits that one. One of two, 47-36. 529. Time is running thin for the Sailors. They really need to start getting some steals or something. And certainly not allowing any offensive rebounds. Kreisick doesn't allow one there. He gets bodied, no foul called, and he controls the ball. Gets it out to Kellen Adams. Kellen Adams now looking to do something. Kreisick now, he makes a move, drives paint, goes in, and he makes a nice touch. That one could have even possibly been an in one, as he did get bumped a little bit, but nothing was called. 47, 38, now we're under 10 points for the Sailors. 4.54 left to go in the game. Reese dribbling around. Oh, there's a steal. It's Kellen Adams. He's going to go coast to coast and lay it in, and he misses. Oh, no. Oh, that one hurt. That one hurt as he had a breakaway and just put it too hard off the glass. 
and didn't get the bounce. Oh, man, that one stung. Because that one would have brought it to a seven-point game. Oh, Mr. Adams, you can't get them all, buddy. Go back out and try again. Oh. We are KTYV Sports on FM, Steamboat Springs. I'm Drew McElhaney, and we thank you all for tuning in from all around the country and even international. This is big game for Steamboat. Last time Steamboat won. Uh, this far into the playoffs to go to the final to go to the final fours was 1986. They've been here seven times since, and all of them they've come up short. And this one they're looking a little rough right now. They're going to have to really find themselves to pull out a victory here. And it's not like Montrose finds himself in this situation very often either. Montrose, last time Montrose was in the in the quarterfinals of the playoffs was 1992. That was the year I moved to Steamboat. I was just a little 19-year-old punk at that time. Now I'm a 48-year-old punk. It's going to be Montrose ball with 4.43 left to go in the game. 47 for the Indians, 38 for the Sailors. It's going to be Cheesum bringing the ball up for Montrose. He's going to find it over to Reese. Reese being guarded by Jackson Metzler. Metzler letting him do nothing. Steamboat certainly stiffening up the defense. He goes straight down the lane and makes a nice lay. And that's a great play by Trey Reese. That's a fantastic play. And those are the players that are going to just kill the Sailors as they're trying to make a comeback here. And the other thing is the Sailors don't have time to just waste clock. They need to really get shots going. It's Gideon from the corner. That misses. And it's going to be a rebound. Four-fighter. Oh, that was a almost double dribble there. Nothing called. Luke Hutto then just slashes in, but he misses. And then, again, Sailors just not getting to the loose ball. And it comes up to Montrose with 3.49 left to go. The Sailors are really trying. But things just aren't seeming to be going their way right now. As Luke Hutto's got the ball, he's going to slash to the paint. Now he's going to kick it back out. And it goes to Reed. Now back over to Hutto. And now over to Chico. He's looking to give it in to Oberg. Oberg turns around. Kiss off the glass. As the defender, Parker Lindquist, went to the floor. He pretty much had an open shot. 3.22 left to go in the game. 51 38. This is by far the lowest amount of points the Sailors have put on a board all year. Parker Lindquist off on his three attempt. And the Sailors can't get to the loose ball. They do. Krasik with a three. Oh, and he just misses. Nothing falling for the Sailors. Just can't get the rock to go down. Tyrese now. Trey Reese now will find Luke Hutto. Luke Hutto now over to Trey Reese. Now over to Cheesum. Cheesum has the ball for the Sailors. You don't want to foul him. He's an 86% foul shooter. And now here's Luke Hutto. He'll be fouled out top by Jake Kreisick. That's going to be number four on Jake Kreisick. With 2.46 left to go in the game, the Sailors are paddling a rapid river that's going pretty strong right now. And there's a timeout on the floor. An administrative timeout, they say. It's the first time I've heard that all season. <laughs> oh, man. Well, with uh, just a few minutes left to go in the game, I just really quick so I don't have to do it at the end of the game. Yep, thank you to Yampa Valley Bank, Alpine Lumber, Mountain View Car Wash, Russell's Auto Salon, Steamboat Ace Hardware, the all-new Steamboat Motors, and the Paoli Group at Colorado Group Realty. We really thank all our sponsors. The parents have asked me to thank the sponsors. In this year of COVID, not being able to attend the games, these sponsors have really made it nice for the families to be able to watch and hear their, 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 their hometown sailors on Steamboat Radio. Luke Hutto now taking the shots. It's really starting to kind of look uh, like a, a a real uphill battle for the Sailors here with only 38 points. If you would have told me that we'd be towards the end of the game and the Sailors only with 38 points, I would have said you're crazy. Parker Lindquist thought about a black line three. Now it's Jake Kreisick, but he misses everything. Got hit on the arm. It was obviously a foul. Uh, now they're going to at least say it was tipped. 
So it wasn't a foul. Jay Kreisick doesn't air ball the ball, okay? So if it's an air ball, something would happen. And it was a tip ball. And it's Steamboat, Steamboat ball. Kreisick now just travels. Oh, he just, he went to make the pass. He hesitated for a second, and his pivot foot just drug about three inches. But it was obvious. A uh, travel call on Jake Kreisick with 2.29 left to go in the game. 51-38. Unbelievable that the Sailors are only sitting at 38 points. you got to hand it to the defense of Montrose because they're good. Luke Hutto went up again like he was going to dunk it, but then just decided to lay it up in soft. That was a nice play by Luke Hutto to be aware. 53-38 now. Now it's going to be Lindquist from way outside. And he cashes that one for Steamboat, bringing it a little bit closer with two minutes. But with 2.03 left to go in the game, 53-41, Indians, the Sailors. I don't, yeah, did, if they led this game, I can't remember. They were tied around 4-4 and 6-6. And I don't remember if the Sailors actually ever held a lead in this game. Been the Montrose Indians all along. But, uh, you know, home court advantage, you know. Sailors have been playing home this whole time. It's different coming in. Uh, we talk about it on the Harvey's Huddle quite a bit. I think uh, Brian Harvey talked about it the other day about, uh, what is it, uh, you know, your line of sight, I think is what he said. In, in a different gymnasium, makes it a little harder to hit your shots. And the, some of the Sailors just haven't really got themselves going today. Eric Pollard still sitting on the bench. I know he's in foul trouble, but he's been on the bench for quite a while now. I don't believe he fouled out. Maybe he did. I don't know. I don't remember. Jennings will inbound the ball now to Trey Reese. Full court pressure for the Sailors. We haven't seen that much this year because the Sailors hadn't had the full court press. But now with the time running out, and that's going to be Cheesem for three misses. Rebounded by Gideon. We really need something here. We need a quick shot, and we need a three. Parker Lindquist calls for it. He lets it go. Oh, it's just off the front iron. Kicked out, though, to Gideon. Now to row, and Gideon step back three. Puts it up. Oh, just misses. I like the, the shot that he took. Just missed. As the Sailor's going to look to foul. No, I'm going to steal. It is stolen. It's, yeah, it's on the floor, and it's Sailor ball. As Kellen Adams goes to the floor, tied up with Trey Reese. And gets the turnover with the possession arrow. With 127 left to go, it's a steep mountain to climb. One of these San Juan mountains at 53-41. Gideon now with the ball, brings it up. He should just shoot it. He should just, we just need to get the ball up. Oh, oh no! Kreisick all alone underneath the basket. Couldn't handle the ball. Let's the defense get back up. And they're going to call a traveling violation on Jake Kreisick. He must have switched his pivot foot or something as he was spinning around down low. 117 left to go. Looking rough here for the Sailors. As now they're left to just fouling and hoping for missed free throws here. It's going to be Trey Reese going to the free throw line. None of these guys are solid free throw shooters except for Mr. Cheesum at 86%. Everybody else was, you know, roughly around 50 to 60% free throw shooter. I think, uh, if I remember, Trey Reese was about a 60% free throw shooter. And he makes the first one. Yep, and let's see here. Yeah, 115 to go. He makes the first one. 54-41, really looking glim for the Sailors now. And it's inbounded to Cade Gideon, who has 14 points on today's game. Had a really solid game in the first half. Gets it out to Rowan, and he hits a three. So that's a nice play by the Sailors. But because of the two free throws, they only get a one-point advantage on that one. As it goes back to 55-44, it's pretty much about where this game has been all game. Sailors have been down anywhere between 14 and 10 points pretty much all, all day or all night. Sailors got it down to 9 and then had an excellent chance to get it down to 7 when Kellen Adams had a great play but just got a little too excited when he saw he was all alone on the layup and uh, just missed it off the side. That would have cut it to 7 points and maybe swung the momentum a little bit. Unfortunately, that missed, and then they came, Montrose came down, scored right after that. 
and they were right back up to a double figure lead. Great game by Parker Lindquist today who stepped up really big for the Sailors. He has nine points. Crazy. Jake Kreisick with only five has struggled finding it this today in the offensive end, but has done what he's all done all season on the defensive end. He's had a couple block shots and a couple steals for Jake Kreisick. And now they inbound the ball. Granger Rowan was sitting on five points. Now looking to foul. They don't call that one. Now they call it. That's going to be Mr. Jennings going to the line. Jordan Jennings for the Montrose Indians. Like me to say, the Montrose Native Americans. It's a one and one. We need a miss here, rebound for the Sailors, and then a quick score on the other end to have any chance here. And Mr. Jordan Jennings does what his fan base wants him to do, and he makes the first one. Again, now extending the lead out to two, or 12 points, and makes the second one. That's 13 points with a minute to go. Not looking good for the Sailors. But it's been a fantastic season for these young men. And there's almost a foul on Gideon, but he gets it to Kreisick. Oh my God, that ball, that ball was literally, I wouldn't even say halfway down, three quarters of the way down. I mean, it was so far down into the basket, they were getting ready to put it on the scoreboard before it decided to reverse itself and come out the top. Now it's inbounded. Now it's quick shot by Gideon in the corner, and he hits that one. So Kate Gideon, by far having his best offensive game of the season, I can think of, as Kate Gideon now is at 17 points. Unbelievable. If you would have told me that Kate Gideon would have 17 points and the Sailors would be trailing by 10, I would have been like, you're crazy. Unfortunately, some of the scoring that we get from other players has, has not materialized and thus down by 10 points. It's been, a, it's been a magical season for this team, no matter what happens in the next minute or so. It's been a magical, magical season for these Steamboat Sailors. I know every single one of these parents that's sitting here is extremely proud of their sons and everything that they've done. They've put a great season together under un, unusual circumstances and times. You know, think about it, these guys had their junior year ended short. They've had an unconventional senior year. Um, and to be able to put such a magical run together, 16 straight wins, and most of them seniors. Good on you, Steamboat. It's not over yet, but it is only 47 seconds and a 10-point deficit. It's going to be a really tough one. And the Sailors make it hard for the inbound pass, and Machos has to call a timeout, so we'll go back to another timeout. So for the, sail the Sailors, Thomas Luer, Austin I Ibarra, Carter Reestead, Jackson Metzler, Granger Rowan, Jacob Kreisick, and Eric Pollard are all seniors. And as these guys move forward in their lives and getting ready to break out of the cocoon of adolescence and to emerge into their beautiful butter butterfly selves into the next stage of their lives, they can always take this moment and realize the special season that they had with their best friends their last year of high school and take something away from it that they can have the rest of their lives. Congratulations to all the seniors on this Sailors team. Game's not over yet, but it's certainly not looking good. 44.3 seconds left on the clock. 57-47, Indians over the Sailors as Trey Reese goes to the line. He makes the first one. So they're starting to ice the game. And he's gonna, no one's putting any, he's not putting in any scrubs, so they're, they're certainly not thinking it's over yet. Trey Reese attempts the second one and he makes it. 59, 47, 44.3 seconds left to go. Here we go. Kate Gideon, Granger Rowan. 
Now back to Gideon. He'll put up another three. Oh, just missed it. The rebounded Indians and a foul on Kellen Adams. Sending Mr. Proctor. That's going to be Cody Proctor is going to be going to the line shooting now with 34 seconds left to go in the game. 59-47. Well, I got to give my uh, hats off to the Montrose Indians and their coaching staff. Coach Ryan Voringer, the head coach, has done a fantastic job with this Montrose team. And they play solid defense. I watched this Steamboat team just destroy people all season. And they certainly struggled against Montrose today. Montrose shut down the Sailors and did everything they had to do. And I'll say the one thing that they did really well is they didn't miss a lot of shots. But where they killed the Sailors, where they really got the Sailors, was the Sailors on the defensive rebounding. The, they just allowed Montrose way too many offensive rebounds, including number 12 who's shooting on the line right now, who missed the first free throw. Mr. Number 12, um, Luke Hutto, had so many offensive rebounds in the first and second half. It really hurts the Sailors. And Jay Kreisick and Granger Rowe and two seniors go to the bench to a round of applause as Thomas Lure and Austin Ibarra come in off the bench. The coach letting them get a few seconds in in their last of their senior season. Parker Lindquist with a rainbow three, doesn't get it to fall, comes down the hands of Trey Reese. This is going to be it for the Sailors. They made it to the quarterfinals. It's not going to go any farther as the Montrose Indians hand them a 61-47 loss. That is it for your Sailors. I know that they're going to be disappointed. They're probably not going to be real happy with how they played. But I got to tell you, I think they played with all heart. I think they gave it their best shot. Kay Gideon actually had a fantastic game with 17 points. Parker Lindquist coming off the bench with nine points. Jake Kreisick with five points, but some great block shots. Granger Rowan had some good shots. Jackson Metzler, uh, Kellen Adams, what a great season to the Sailors. Uh, to all the Sailor parents that made the drive, the four hour drive down here to Montrose for this game. Uh, to Coach Van Dahl, who did a great job getting these Sailors all the way here. I know everybody really wanted this win. We wanted to the, end the curse of 86 and finally break it and move on and go to Colorado Springs and play the big boys down in the Springs for the Final Four. But it's not to be. Not this year anyways. Next year, though, we'll have Kellen Adams back. We'll have Cade Gideon back. We'll have Parker Lindquist back. And those will be the three guys that'll certainly be holding down this team. And there's some good young kids coming up as well. Ben Bogan's a great player from the JV team. And Daniel Raper as well. So the Sailors have a lot to look forward to next season. But I know they're going to be a little disappointed and a little heartbroken today. But they came up against a good team in the Montrose Indians, and they fell. They fell 61-47. I'm Drew McElhaney with KTYV Sports on FM at 105.7, 97.7. And you can follow us at SteamboatRadio.com. We are Fox Sports. Good night, everybody from Manchos. Be safe.